somebody complaining. Eating the tops off the asparagus. Well, oh, that's a bit more bigger. I suspect it might be next door sheep. They have a few sheep and some lambs. I keep getting out into this woodland and throw this gate into here. You can hear one in the background there. I've just it took me nearly 20 minutes to get it back into the field. Uh, so uh, just keep my eye on it. Yeah, lots of lily of the valley. <laughs> Amazing scent. Yeah, bell like flowers. And wonderful foliage. I yeah, just picked a asparagus. <laughs> Going like wildfire now, you can't keep up with it. First sign of the onions. And the first sign of the potatoes as well. How many of these will come, I've no idea. Well, that's a good start. And it's apple blossom time. This is a Cox's Pippin. And this is the, uh, the cooker, the Bromley apple. It's very susceptible to aphids. And I noticed one or two curled leaves on here, so I gave it a spray of insecticide. Late in the evening when there's no insects on it. You can see on there how that leaf is all curled up. Lots of hawthorn blossom appearing. And of course the hedge is beginning to grow <laughs> really quickly. All this, all this fresh growth. It's quite nice because it's got a sort of red tinge to it. I've been busy cutting the grass, so all the grass is cut, which is nice. Get it out of the way before the rain comes tomorrow. And the bluebells are out. Not very many of them, but hopefully they'll spread. Fresh foliage on the uh, on this red oak. They always struggle, these red oaks. They seem to become a... I don't know if it's a fungus or not. Or whether it's a deficiency in the... in the soil. Maybe they don't like alkaline soil, which we tend to have here. Nevertheless, I've... I've given it a spray with fungicide, and hopefully that will help. Yeah, beautiful autumn colours, bright scarlet, from which they get their name, of course. And this is another one. Still surviving, like two of the others which have died off. And there's another one of the lime trees. Seems to be thriving quite well. And the fresh foliage coming on this little miniature spruce tree. <laughs> and this bluey green. Well, it's a wonderful time of year. And grass is all cut. <laughs> So it looks neat, neat and tidy. The dandelions have just about all gone, and it's all buttercups. And the lilac is out. Although in nothing like the same profusion as last year. <laughs> it's a lovely scent.
the one that's blown off. The beginnings of the Boston Ivy. It's amazing to think that that's what you get at this time of year. And in the autumn, the whole of the back of the house is festooned with the stuff. Putting on that wonderful autumn display. But at the moment, that's where it's at. And this is the original garden that came with the house. Just these four fruit trees and a little pond. Pear tree. It's the first time it hasn't been attacked by this but black fungus. We snuck seven bells out of it. But for now, it's looking decidedly healthy. Maybe we'll get more pears this year. <laughs> A yellow flag appearing. But you really keep it under control. Once it, once it gets away, it's really difficult to get out. Yeah, see the duckweed on top of the pond. Every now and then you see them. Newts moving around, coming up for a gulp of air, and diving back down again. Well, I finished cutting the asparagus, so I just let it grow now and put the goodness back into the tubers for next year. And I've got me. Framework up for me beans, which at the moment are in pots. Well, the sheep are coming out from next door, the lambs, and have damaged this lime tree. They really are a pain. They've damaged just the lime trees, there's three of them. They were going to be the, the feature trees in this part of the, of the woodland. I mean, maybe it'll recover, but nevertheless, it set it right back. There's another one. And there's the third one. It really makes me very, very angry. I'm coming through here. So, I want to buy a roll of wire. Sheep fencing. And we just stuck it all the way up there, right to the top. Anyway, that's a lot better. That. Just tightened it up with a straining bar. Looks quite neat and tidy. But everything is fresh and green. <laughs> and looks lovely. And spraying these red oaks with fungicide early on has made a vast difference. There's absolutely no sign of any fungus on there. Nor on this one. <laughs> it's got slightly different leaves, this one. Spiky leaves. It's getting away really well. And this one, which I thought I'd lost to, fungi to a fungus again. It's not doing too badly, but it's still showing signs of it. These silver birds laden with cupkins. And I'm really pleased with the potatoes. <laughs> Considering they cost next to nothing. But uh, we haven't had any rain for, I'll take three weeks now. Everything is dust dry. The problem with potatoes is they need a lot of water. And this is the time of year and the weather. We get lots of aphids. These are the plum tree. So people talk about natural control with ladybirds. 
That's what the dream was. So I'm giving it a, a dose of pesticide to kill them off. Right, so uh, I'm brown was going berserk there. These flowers which open early in the morning. Lots of them produce these wonderful seed heads. A miracle of nature. It seems something here has caught a pigeon. I can't see any carcass. I mean it could have been a sparrowhawk but uh, they don't usually catch pigeons. Blackbirds is their favourite bird. <laughs> Not much at all. But lots of wood lice here. Just there eating the dead grubs. Doesn't seem very much like the usual wood lice. Let's grab one. There are several species of wood lice living in the United Kingdom. It's not the usual, what we call slaters, I seem to remember. Look in this patch of woodland. Ah, lots of strawberries. Very tasty, sweet strawberries. Uh, a lot smaller than the, the ones you get in the shops. Let's pick a few. Oh, there's a few tasty mouthfuls. <laughs> they smell amazing and they're incredibly sweet. But you never get very many of them. They're all hidden away. Yes, that will do very nicely. Well, it's the 23rd of June, very hot, humid day. Thunder is forecast. <laughs> but these hedges need cutting, it's that time of year. And uh, I'll just bash on with it. It's amazing how much they're growing in a matter of a few weeks, these hawthorn hedges. Oh, that looks a lot better. That's only a tiny fraction of it. There's a lot more to go yet. It's time to break it all up and cut it off. You're looking at four hours. I feel a lot better now it's done. In June, apple trees drop all the apples which are going to come to nothing, what they call a June drop. There they are off this one tree. Or just rake them all up before I cut the grass. In the spring I sowed this with two packets of assorted wildflower seeds, thousands of them, and uh, I've just left it, watered it when it was dry, and uh, got next to nothing, just weeds, masses of weeds, That's a nice flower, a nice blood red puppy. And one of these, which I think is a some kind of corn flower, I think. And that's it. 
the rest of it is weeds. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kill it all off with the weed killer before they all start sowing seeds everywhere. Bees working the asparagus flowers, these little tiny flowers. It has almost bright red pollen. You can see it on that bee there. Well, you can almost bunk on the beans. He's climbing French beans, growing really well, as are the potatoes. There's lots of top. How many potatoes there are underneath? I don't know. Five years ago, I cleared this completely. Sowed it with fine grasses and uh, lots of yellow rattle. Uh, every year I put more and more yellow rattle on. Yellow rattle is a, a plant that parasitizes grasses, it's supposed to keep them under control. Anyway, after five years, all I've got is a great big patch of Yorkshire fog. So I'm going to burn in the wildflower meadow a bit and just cut this right back, get the scythe more out, give it a chop and then. Next year I'll just cut it as lawn. The weeping ash, which suffered badly from ash dieback, every year it produces a little bit more growth. Maybe it'll survive. Well, that would be nice. That would be a bonus, because it was a lovely tree. So as you can see by all the dead branches on it. That was the result of ash dieback. Well, it's uh, Friday the 7th of July. It's absolutely stinking up to 28 degrees. But uh, stood there for cutting this, uh, this rank grass in what should have been a wildflower meadow. And get it dry up and then get carted off. So that's the number one job of the day. That's it finished. You can see just how thick it is in the bottom. Well, I'll just leave it up and dry off now. In this heat, it shouldn't take so long, and there's a little bit of charred away. But, uh, 
it's just absolutely thick. And of course, when it, the grass begins to lie down, and it's, uh, it's very difficult to cut. Anyway, it's done. Well, a couple of jobs to do in the garden today after all that thunder and lightning last night. <laughs> I was fishing and uh, rip all this grass off and cart it away up the, up the garden and dump it. It's a pity it rained yesterday because this will be quite wet and therefore it's a little bit more heavy. Nevertheless, let's just get on with it. What you have to follow. This is what you have Probably cats next to those cats. They shit everywhere. If I hadn't seen that, uh, it would have been all over my gear. Yeah, bloody appalling animals they are. Well, that's it all. It didn't take long. Just over half an hour. And uh, next time I cut the grass, I'll run the lawnmower over this, just tidy it all up a bit. Comes up every year, just the one. It produces loads of seeds which are scattered about, but I've never had another one. You know, I think it's called grit and nutweed. And the bees absolutely love it. Red bumble bumblebee. Oh, no. 
I think it's grit and nut weed. I think that's what this flower is called. Here's a little putch of birdfoot trefoil. I'll leave it every year. It doesn't grow very tall. But again, the bees love it. There are bees all over it. See the pollen sacks on it. Mm. These are the outdoor tomatoes. There's probably too many of them in each grow bag, but it doesn't matter. They seem to do rather well. No, no sign of any flowers yet. But uh, the cost of producing them. Well, far outweigh the cost of going to shops and buying some. But there's a lot of satisfaction in, uh, in picking your own tomato. Uh, this far north you don't often get outdoor tomatoes growing terribly successfully. But we'll see. And this is that bay tree which I uh, chopped down. This is new shoots emerging. I'll have to nip the tops off them, just keep it under control. I don't want to kill it off altogether, but uh, I don't want it growing up as high as it did before, because you can see there, where it, uh, the yew hedge in the shade uh, has died back, but it, hopefully it will recover. And there is that Boston Ivy, taking over the house again to produce that wonderful autumn display. It's, it's beginning to take over the window, so I'll just have to go around there, and the secretary has just tidy this lot up and it looks like I might get some pears this year <laughs> there are the potatoes <laughs> I'm sorely tempted just to dig one up and see what's underneath but we, we're not having any had any rain until yesterday for months on end I suspect it's all top and there won't be many potatoes underneath so I'm going to leave them for another couple of weeks. Hopefully this rain will swell the tubers and we'll get some nice boiling of early potatoes. And the other thing is the, uh, the beans have reached the top of the cane, so I just need to nip the growing shoots out of there. Hopefully they will then produce more side shoots and we'll get more beans. In the woodland, the development of hazelnuts. Attractive to grey squirrels, unfortunately, but uh, also attractive to uh, greater spotty woodpeckers. And this wonderful purple hazel produces these purple cobnuts. Unfortunately, the edible part inside is no different from the others. It would be nice if it was purple, but decorative, but uh, unfortunately not. But the tree itself is magnificent. This is another one of the hazels, absolutely festooned with nuts it is. Get the clusters of them. And these are the Bromley apples. <laughs> I've taken most of the doubles off. So it's just the they're in singles. They become an enormous thing. Unfortunately they don't keep unless you've Stew them and put them in the freezer. The Brayburn apple tree is having a year off. <laughs> there are very few Brayburn apples from there this year. Last year there were hundreds, far too many. So it's a, it's a bit of a relief. And similarly with the, with the Cox's pippins. 
It's having a year off as well. <laughs> Just the odd fruit on it. But uh, they are nice. You can see one there. This weed strewn patch was where I put the new strawberry plants. They were just completely overwhelmed with weeds. There's two ways of dealing with it. One is you get down on your hands and knees. And you hand weed a lot. But, uh, you never get them all and some of them break off at the root. And within two or three weeks it's just as bad as ever it was. So I found the best way of dealing with it is to take out the plants you want. In my case, strawberry plants. And then just blitz the rest with glycophosphate weed killer. Anyway, I sprayed that with uh, glycophosphate a fortnight ago. So they'll be well on their way to dying off. And uh, what I'm going to do now is dig it over. And these are the strawberry plants which I've removed. And once I've dug it over, they'll all be to go back in that cleared ground. Well, there it is. Just two thirds are done. It's not a difficult job, it's just one of these steady away jobs. I think the biggest mistake people make is trying to take too much with every spadeful. But it'll take slightly longer, <laughs> with less on the spade. But I'll just carry on and finish this off. But uh, that'll be it in the garden for this first few months of the year. Maybe since May, I think. So I'll see you later on in the year. Take care. Bye-bye.